Coming to you from Scenic the Basement at ICN Studios in Brooklyn, I'm Jana Jefferson and this is And Friends with Jana Jefferson. Every other week, me and a new guest host, each time we're going to discuss the latest in pop culture, the industry, life, and more. And today's guests are none other than Kristen and Christine from The Takeover. (laughs) Oh my gosh, okay. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling this fine Tuesday? I'm tired. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Retweet. Same. Retweet. I'm, well, plus I'm one. smiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy to be here. Yes. Oh my God. I have cramps. We were just talking about this yes. and now I'm like, oh, I have cramps. But you know what? We're going to push it through. We're going to push it through. But when the uh, when my show first begins, we have something called the Beyonce Moon of the Day. <gasps> Yes. Okay, Beyonce that's, is that's like lit. my sun, moon, and stars. Aww. And um, every episode, the Beyonce mood of the day is basically giving your, how you're feeling today with a different Beyonce song, Beyonce lyric. Oh, um, something that has to do with You got Beyonce. time. I came, I came prepared. I What's to, yours, I like girl? Let me know. Kristen. Oh, okay. Sam. Um, it's from I Was Here. Okay. Um, and... Let me see. I have to find the perfect one. It's basically like the chorus is I was here. I lived. I loved. I was here. I just feel like I have a lot more work to be there. But Mm -hmm. I feel like the exhaustion of trying to get there has been taken over me. So that's pretty much why I chose this song. Mm -hmm. Um, the, The rest of the lyrics that I related to was I did. I've done everything that I wanted and it was more than I thought it would be. I will leave my mark so everyone will know I was here. Beautiful. Um so yes, in the process of leaving my mark, I'm just tired. Yes. It's an exhausting process. And I feel like mine's sort of like also kind of retrospective too. Mine I think is from listen. It's like now I gotta find my own as in like obviously find my own voice, mm-hmm. find what I want to do in this world one. because I don't know what it is, but October has been just like a very interesting month. I feel like I'm doing a lot of thinking and growing and reflecting on like what I want and stuff. So I think that listen is probably how I feel this time around. Mm. Maybe it's the full moon. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, girl, yeah, yeah. Tonight is the full moon. Actually. And it oh, is wait. doing a lot. There was a full moon yesterday too. The moon was like, ma- was it Sunday too? Oh, speaking wow. about the full moon. Several I know t- today might, is it today the last day to play lottery? I think so. It is. You did, did I yours? did I miss the date? Did I, did I miss Girl. the time? No, no, no. I think you have until tomorrow at like eleven a.m. All right. Can I stop our corner store? Sure. Okay. Okay. We can um, definitely do that. But mine, um, considering that like I think it was sixteen years ago this song came out. Uh, me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. And that's all I got, got in the end. That's what I found out. out. And it ain't no need to cry. I took a vow that from now on I'm gonna be my own best friend. So I'm in between that. Thank you for joining in. Um, I'm between that and Soldier. I was I listening to, to that Sessions. on the train. Yes. <laughs> and do you like the um, boys up top from the BK? Of no, course. How they money, money three ways. ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm in between that because you know I'm trying to be by myself. But I'm trying to be by myself with maybe somebody. Oh. So I'm trying to okay. figure that out. Oop. Boot up. But, um, so I have a question. No, I'm not trying to be booed up. I feel like that's trash. <laughs> but, you know. Just the prospect of having someone to like snuggle up every so often. Or maybe say no to them, but then really say yes. I'm crying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you <laughs> really, you really, shit. yeah, you really like to, you playful. Yeah, on some hood. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, yes. Okay, so I'm not, I, <laughs> I'm naturally in this like, oh, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, please forgive me. Um, but I was wondering, blind dates, anyone? Have, have any of y'all done? No. Oh, no, never. I, I, I never, never will. I don't think I ever will go on a blind will. date, to That's be honest trash. with you. Unless it was my very, very, very good friend doing it. Yeah. And even then, I've heard about <laughs> bad ones. We've heard about bad ones. So. Yeah, when they're just like, oh, it looks like he Or like they met you the like, person and on then the you're street. Just like, right. No, you, you don't know me, obviously. Or or worse, like you met them on the street. Sorry if the person's listening, but um, you <laughs> met <laughs> you met the person on the street. They was trying to hit on you, but you try to throw them to your best friend. Mm-hmm. Don't do that to me. The alley oop. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. oh my goodness. But yes. One I of liked my that. friends, um, their roommate is like perfect for one of my friends. And then the other day, like when we were talking, he the um, he's like, oh. I think like I clicked most with Jaina though, and I'm like, mm-hmm, that's not what I wanted or asked for, and I don't like him. Yikes! So, so like, alley oop it, alley oop it right to where it was supposed to go. 
I mean, shoot your shot. It didn't say you had to shoot it by yourself. Okay. You it doesn't have, have to be an assist. assist. Unless you're not going to miss. You can have an assist. Mm, yeah, but <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I want to be alone for the rest of the year. I mean, they ain't got two more, mm-hmm. ain't, two more ain't, months. Ain't, ain't, ain't much That's more That's fine. Time. Two months alone. I mean, cuffing <laughs> season is in full effect, apparently. So the calendar year doesn't isn't what you need to go by. It's the cuffing season calendar. It's the cuffing calendar. Yes. Are you going to be cuffed? She's already. Oops. We can proceed. She's already. Okay. <laughs> you have a boyfriend? I do. Is he nice? Oh, yeah. He's very nice. Oh, good. Perfect. She, say, she said, is he nice? He's very nice. <laughs> Shut up. <Okay>. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. listeners, remember, I've created a Spotify playlist for the Beyonce Mood of the Day. Oh, that's So, beautiful. search Beyonce Mood of the Day, and then you follow it. And then each of the songs mentioned by myself and my friends to start off the show have been and will be added to the playlist. Somebody After- already said me, myself, and I? We- no. You oh are yeah, the I'm first, the first. You're the first one to say that. The first person to say soldier. Okay. No on. one's ever said listen before. I think I might have said I was here, but I'm not sure. But anyway, it's going to be added to the playlist regardless. So you <laughs> stay up to date on your Beyonce discography. Yeah, I will Except follow. for Rose for You, because that is not a thing. Do you um, guys know about Rose for You? Tell more. Do tell. Okay, so out of the blue one day last week, a an Instagram page oh, popped up. Yes. And it was like all these cute little things. It was like Beyonce and Kelly and I think Tidal were being followed by this page. Mm-hmm. And there were all these different videos and sound clips of something. Mm-hmm. And we're all like, hmm, what could this be? Everybody thinks it's a reunion. It's not. And this is why. <laughs> <laughs> so Tavi is not following the page. <laughs> so it, I kept randomly following more people. Like it started to follow like Netflix, it followed Nicki Minaj. And I was like, hmm, what is this? And I'm like trying to decipher. I'm like, it's coming out on this date because of this and that. And like after a while, I'm like, hmm, something's up. Then they started following, quote unquote, Frank Ocean. Now everyone and their mother knows Frank Ocean doesn't leave his house. Yeah, no. Nor has social media except for Tumblr Mm -hmm. that he goes on like every so often like every six months <laughs> every nine years living yeah. he's probably wow. having the best he was in cuba life. living his best life at one point wow. so oh, that's not frank ocean but when it, when it followed this frank ocean i was like this isn't real this isn't real then one of the beyonce fan pages that i follow on twitter was <laughs> <laughs> apparently the sound clips that they had were just like background vocals from grown woman so it wasn't it's like a complete troll page Wow. And people are y'all, still. They had y'all shook. Still. They're still updating it. People are still like, what does this mean? I'm like, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. It's me. I win. You lose. Ha ah. Beyonce really got people out here decoding <laughs> stuff on and social media. And it's not media. even Beyonce. Yo, Zero that's how you know the hive is strong. Very. The strongest. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't. I just can't believe. And it, I think, I'm pretty sure it's still up. I unfollowed it after they did that Frank Ocean thing because I was just like, you're not going to pull the wool over my eyes. The jig is up. The, j- the jig is up. <laughs> but um, first segment of the show is called Talk of the Town. Oh, cool. And the first segment, well, not segment, the first topic, Nicki Minaj is being sued by Tracy Chapman, the singer. For what? She used Chapman's song, Baby Can I Hold You, in an unreleased song from Queen without getting a clearance sample. Oh, Lord, However, likes. they played the song on Funk Flex and The Breakfast Club after she was denied the sample. Yikes. So she was just going to be disrespectful knowing that it wasn't clear? Yeah. So now it's technically, obviously, like copyright infringement because I think she took the melody and some of the like exact lyrics. Yikes. So. I mean, but we know that she's disrespectful. Did we not? This is what happened. That karma is going to come around. You think you can just do whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to sound real crazy, but who is Tracy Chapman? You got a fast car. Mm That didn't really help Chris. It's not really <laughs> Nobel's. Oh, have you ever heard, um, give me one reason to stay here. Oh, I know that one. And I'm turning turn back around. around. Mm. This person's black? Mm. Yes. Uh, uh. Give me one, one reason, reason to stay here. here. And mm-hmm. I'm turning wow. back okay, around. So drag me See, everybody. See, I don't want to leave you lonely. You mm-hmm. got to let me change mm-hmm. my... This is not like amazing. country music. No, it she's like a, like a, a folk. Yeah. Oh, folk. Okay, that sounds like folk, yeah. But I she's a black woman, the long black dress, country. 
Um, but <laughs> she's getting that coint because yeah, well, now you, as she is should. disrespectful. As yeah. she should. Um, you know, as someone who thought they were going to go into entertainment law, I follow interesting Instagrams. We do this thing called Take One, Pass It Down. Mm-hmm. And so I think the next one we should do like Instagram accounts that you should follow versus Instagram accounts that you shouldn't. Um, and one that I follow is Creative Genius Law. And I think anyone who's a creative should follow it um, because they do things like that. Like they probably have, like they follow like hip hop, pop, everybody in the entertainment industry, even like dancers and things like that. And like thinking about the law behind creatives and mm-hmm. like thinking that like there's no really statutes or precedents when it comes to like lawsuits as it pertains to like the arts and like more and more because of social media and because of the digital s- platforms that mm-hmm. are being created to copyright and trademarks yeah though. that like that area of law is actually going to be very very important for like the next dec like the next amount of decades like mm-hmm. even more so now than ever even with the idea of like samples are being used faster now more than ever and things of that nature so i wouldn't be surprised if creative genius law talks about this but yeah i think everyone in this room should follow creative genius law i'm down for it yeah i always like to follow new pages and stuff yeah. but i'm glad that you know this that's just like super trash rude especially yeah, because if she knew it's like, like she told you no know. you even put on twitter like sis said that's no. what that was yeah, mm-hmm. but even and that's why there was like a delay in like the album even coming out it's supposed to come out like early Early August, it didn't come out until late August, and like I that was one of the things that needs to be cleared. Like a billion, billion times, that yeah, needs to be cleared. Like, the whole thing with um, Ariana Grande needed yeah, to be cleared. Yeah, like she put this whole big thing on Twitter. She's like, "I have this song with like one of the greatest rappers ever," because Nas is on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then she's like, "But I just need the good sis Tracy Chapman oh, to give I do me the clearance." This. And the, oh, every okay. all the barbs were like, "Where's Tracy Chapman?" <sighs> Okay, so that's how you use your army to really like, gang up on other artists. Like, but what she, are you doing? but it didn't. Obviously, it didn't make no moves. Tracy said no. was like, "I said no." So I feel like I she probably was I like, said. "I'll take the loss because, listen, like, I got it. I got mm-hmm. the money to spare. Maybe it won't make a dent in the the queen pool." I don't and then know. they just played it on two stations. You know, Charlamagne was probably behind that. He's probably I don't give a mm, fuck. Her and like Charlamagne and Funk Flex. That, I just think them. it's just like rude because it's like one if someone tells you no to something no don't no. do it mm. like That's it doesn't matter everything. who you hmm. think you are don't yeah. do it period yeah. so I wonder how much that lawsuit is gonna be I hope it's nice and fun. I hope, that, I, hope mm-hmm. that, I hope that Queen Radio is helping her pay these bills she's probably gonna be on Tracy Chapman to freedom <laughs> cocksucker of the day Tracy Chapman <laughs> Dad. poor thing no, to freedom is probably the best thing that happened, I think, the entire year so far. Yeah, I've been thinking, like, I'm like, yo, if Nikki hysterical. ever has a child, if Nikki ever has a child, that child had, I'm like, yo, your mother is crazy, yo. What will slow Nicki Minaj down? I don't think a kid I would. I don't know if I don't it think would. a kid would. Didn't slow down Cardi. But Cardi's young and fresh. Oh, no, I don't mean slow down in terms of oh, music like, or content or... Pro- I'm talking about, like... With Personal the wise, yeah, yeah, like what was I think it down. would like hone her in a little bit, you like reel her so? in, maybe, unless she's just like, ooh, you know, some women do go a little bit wild when they are pregnant. They're like, look, <laughs> look what I did, God's little miracle. Facts. I am Jesus. Facts. Look what I've done, and so I got the like, coin. Mm-hmm. She would go off. Ugh. <laughs> that baby, I can't even imagine Nicki Minaj as a mother. I'm sure she'd be lovely, but like I feel like she would be like, a, like so over the top with it. Facts. But to freedom was like the best to, thing. To freedom. To freedom. Like it was the best thing I've ever. Yikes! Had. Yikes! For like yikes. three weeks straight, I laughed about it because it was just it was so over the top. Yeah. Real queens became queens because they have balls. Mm. Like something nonsensical, but. You know, I wish her the best. Hopefully, her and Tracy can work things out. I don't, but oh. yeah, Tracy, get, Tracy, get your coin, girl. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm. Yeah, get it, get yourself a fast car. Yes, be lovely. Okay, so the next story: a man on an airplane grabbed a woman's breast twice, but justified the sexual assault by stating that Donald Trump said it was okay. Huh? This woman this was s- sitting in front of the man whose name is Bruce Alexander, so we can uh, follow him and uh, ruin his life. And she initially <laughs> thought he touched her by accident. Then the second time she knew it was no accident. The man reportedly said, 
quote, the president of the United States says it's okay to grab women by their private parts while he was being arrested. Like, is that, is that a joke? No. He was arrested on a flight from Texas to Albuquerque. Oh, from Texas. Yeah. That nigga so, you know, they just. It's about that life. Buck and he was going to Albuquerque. He was going to Albuquerque. He was going to New Mexico. Yeah. That Grab nigga, my titties and I slapped the shit out of you. Yeah. Like, apparently the me? woman like got up and was like, don't do it again. Like you, you touched me twice now. And the, the, obviously. She's fine though. They didn't, they didn't like reprimand her or anything. Mm-mm. Okay. Good. But no. they, I think they arrested him as soon as the plane touched down. I would have like landed the plane. Oh, no, no, no. We would have had to figure out how this plane is. The plane might not have reached New Mexico if I was on that plane. How What's dare you? What's going on? Mm-hmm. What are we doing? And, and it's like how the woman was sitting in front of him. So I'm like, does he grab through the seat to Had do to this? That's shit. ludicrous. Like, that's crazy to me. What's how someone not, thinks they could just do that. Because like? he seems, he mm-hmm. sounds Like, when up. I read that this morning, I was like, that doesn't, that's like the most disgusting thing. We, I've ever heard. Wow. This, this is getting this is out of control, of, mm, bro. Oh this, my is, God. this world is just... Because my um, president said I could. The leadership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is what happens. When like, you this is my leader. Food. Yeah. See, Yo. when you do clownery, <laughs> <laughs> clown comes back to bite. This is what happens. I, I, I just... Like, I, I, I'm at a loss because it's just like... We know he's an ass. And we know that people are, like, firmly and... Like a hundred percent behind mm-hmm. him and believing donkeys everything walk that, together though. that they say mm-hmm. exactly. He's an ass and donkeys walk together. Right. <laughs> so I just feel like, I mean, these are the type of things that happen when we have idiots literally ruling the world. Mm-hmm. You know, like so many things internationally are affected by what we do, the moves that we make. Mm-hmm. Um, as as terrible as that is in some in some regard. Um, so having him. Like literally be like, oh yeah, it's cool. I grab a woman by a pussy. Like mm-hmm. I grab a woman by whatever. Your private parts are free game for everybody. It's t- literally mm-hmm. telling me that okay, you're an your, object. Your, your body mm-hmm. does not belong to you. Mm-hmm. In the same way that you know he's sitting here trying to um um delegitimize people's um uh, sexual, sexual identity, orientation, and orienta- identity, orientation, all of that. Like so. And then access to their actual humanity. You're literally saying mm-hmm. your body does not belong to you. Mm-hmm. Neither and is your, so, neither is like your rights. Like you mm-hmm. have no rights as a woman. You have no rights as a member of society. You have no rights um, as a citizen. Mm-hmm. Like even how that trickles down into like this whole thing about like voting and how voting is important. It's like how can, why would my voice matter if my body doesn't? You know, like and it's an extension. It's of a part it. of your body, yeah. And. You know, you know, it's 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 so it's so sad. Also, like wherever that woman is right now, that she had to have gone through this and to know that it was an extension of something that she probably most likely did not vote for. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and to be so. like, mm-hmm. wow, like this man is in in office for now. He's gonna be in office for what two more two years? Two more years. Mm-hmm. Knock Which on wood. Like- knock on everything that I could knock on that he doesn't receive a second term. That. We get it together in the midterms. Oh, I pray. And, Two weeks, guys. Get it together. You know, because I'm seeing all these, you know, very faithful, amazing, you know, melanated candidates that are going up for mayor and governor. And I would hope that once they finish their terms, if they feel fit, that they can go for the presidency. Then by all means, let's get let's rally behind, you know, a Stacey Abrams. Let's rally behind um, an Andrew Gillum in Florida. Like, let's rally behind these young people of color who actually still believe in politics Mm because it's it's so it's so sad now that like less and less people want to go to like law school or school for policy people of color because they're like what's the point it's not protecting me it's not protecting what am i gonna do with that i'm gonna Mm -hmm. be a become a policy maker i'm gonna stay local and while local um elections are great and and obviously like there's more seats in local than there are at the top and they're just as important, if not more. It's just the idea of like, well, look who we actually, you know, look at elect. Our who do we elect the versus who deserves to yeah, be elected? Who should be literally elected. across yeah. the board? Like Brett Kavanaugh, just he, Ugh, Supreme Court, you know, trash. like well, trash. <laughs> literally a a public a uh, uh, major media outlets covering his um his case mm-hmm. of sexual assault yeah. against someone who's like you know notable like she clearly like 
did what she had to do in terms of um, mm-hmm. progressing in life. She's very successful. She's mm-hmm. a professor. You think I'm gonna want to come out and ruin my my yeah. um yeah. Uh, um like my reputation, my, my reputation, life, my, my like credit, just, everything that I've done. Just seeing that woman, just like how it still affects her today, and how like it hurts her right. to even like try to tell people that this man did something to her so mm-hmm. long ago mm-hmm. but it affects you for a long long time yeah mm-hmm. and people are still they're like get over it mm-hmm. her experience the world continues to turn He's clarence thomas judge. you know all like there's too many to name that's how disgusting mm-hmm. it is and and it's like oh well if my leadership is doing it that's clearly what then i should do totally because fine. we follow our leaders that's mm-hmm. the point of that thou shalt not lie thou shalt not cheat thou shalt not steal that karma thou shalt is not gonna covet, get thou them. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's like all these commandments that is taught in the holy book that are also just taught in like c- common sense, like those things are not good, are the exact things that all of our leaders are doing. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so unfortunate that I'm not even concerned for like it's it's so interesting. Like even when you hear elders are like, oh, I'm not concerned. I'm about to. I'm about, my casket, I could pick out my casket today mm-hmm. and be fine with leaving this earth. But even then, like, I feel like even our generation, like, yes, we can still make change. We can still, like, we're still the millennials that are moving forward to, like, try and get things done. But I'm actually worried for, like, our the kids. children and the kids mm-hmm. and the kids' kids mm-hmm. because they're in the, they're growing up in the age of Trump. Mm-hmm. Like, they they didn't have, an, they they knew of Obama but they're growing up in the Trump era. Mm-hmm. And these so things are, these this is things. their basis. This mm-hmm. is their foundation, you know? Like our foundation was 9-11, the war, Afghanistan and mm-hmm. Iraq, but then we had Obama, mm-hmm. you know? The but then was like a positive and but now we have Trump. Mm-hmm. Whereas them, they're starting off with, this oh, garbage. what is 9-11? Yeah. What is this war? Like it's all stuff life? that they're learning in the history books, but like their history and the things that they'll tell their kids are the is the nightmare that we're right. in right now. Right. And it's really sad. And it's unfortunate. You know that that nightmare is actually so real. So like I work as a, a, a counselor to students of color in independent schools. And one of my kids came to me today and told me that another kid, a white kid, and my kid is Haitian. Um, so he's black. And he told me that uh, the the white kid came to him and said to him last week that um, he doesn't want dark skin like him. The white kid said he don't want dark skin like. But how are you kid. supposed to get dark? Skin? So how? First of all, how are you supposed Idiot. to get dark skin? You sound so stupid. Two, um, what the fuck? And now mm-hmm. apparently the kid today, that same kid who, according to the school, he has quote unquote issues. Because you see, when it comes to little white kids, you know, we say they have issues, ADD. but we're not gonna. Yeah. name what it is that's wrong with them mm-hmm. and say like you're racist mm-hmm. like you have racist ideology and tendency at the age of 12 um because mm. that's how old they are how old they are today he goes um oh you know common black names are star keisha and keisha this and felicia and then proceeded to go up to the, the black girls oh, the no girls. the black girls during recess and ask them do you have one of these names and literally made a the seventh grader made an eighth grade girl cry so so he still has issues. That's that's but what we're I was told that off. he had issues. But then I demanded them to give me a report as to how they talk to my students about this issue and what is being done at the school by tomorrow. Mm. So I should be able to hear back from them by tomorrow whether or not they address the situation. But the kid probably just has like ADD. Well, because ADD, ADD makes you racist. Is. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, there's a thing called affluenza. You didn't hear about it? What? Affluenza. Affl- you know what? It must have slipped my mind. Oh my god, <laughs> man! Wow, completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's ridiculous. But yeah, but I need that sickness, affluenza. But that's all connected. Help, help me. I mean, for you to think that you have access to another to a woman's body, to think that you have the audacity to call another kid. Like and say that like their skin isn't beautiful for you to have the audacity for n- to, without being provoked yeah mm-hmm. or even have the audacity just to do it just because you think you to can feel do like it. you can go for one of the highest to uh, to accept one of the highest um and most esteemed positions, positions of in of power in this I I personally regard the Supreme Court higher than our president at times because I'm mm-hmm. like y'all making some decisions that will always be the precedent and technically y'all have y'all y'all um y'all jobs for life mm-hmm. like you can retire if you want to because obviously they're not going to force you to stay but your job is for life once you receive it like 
and you're setting and precedence you're for my children and my children's children. Kind of nonsense. Oh, okay. Because Harpers, that's the boy's mm-hmm. name is Harper. Harpers become Brett Kavanaugh's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Harpers mm-hmm. become the guy on the plane, you know, mm-hmm. and it's saddening to know. And Harp Trump was a Harper. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So Trump was a Harper, <laughs> a Preston, <laughs> a Wesley, a like, Dent. Dent. I'm tired. <laughs> Harvey. No, I'm just a Batman. Yeah. But <laughs> but yeah. Oh my god. What uh, anything else on Talk of the Town? Um, I think that's all for Talk of the Town. Wow, the Talk of the Town was quite ecstasy. <laughs> ecstasy. I, I do a like lot. Talk of the Town. Now we're at questions with the guest. So tell me a little bit about the takeover with Kristen and Christine. Okay, okay so <laughs> this whole tagline that you heard you know we say it like this or variations of that depending on our moods um it stems back to 2015 actually it stems back to 2013 so we met and started our friendship like officially when we um entered amherst college which is where we went to school it's a small liberal arts college in the in western massachusetts in the pioneer valley go mammoths question mark that's our new um mascot um so we started up there um we were we got accepted and we went to admitted students weekend we had seen each other in april but we actually didn't start our our, like friendship until september october when we Mm -hmm. first got onto campus um we like randomly started taking classes together we realized we were both from brooklyn we realized that we were both from this um student recruitment program um called prep for prep i did prep for prep um like fifth grade version and Kristen did prep for prep ninth grade version and Mm. basically it gives students seventh grade version um and basically it gives you yeah yeah, yeah. it's like you do you do from fifth to seventh grade and and then then we do do from seven seven to nine nine. yeah but basically it gives students um minority students access to independent and boarding schools whether Mm -hmm. it be in the city or within the tri-state area um and so we were both in that program but then we both ended up at the same college so we realized that we may had like we had some mutual friends like same sort of experiences being um black girls from brooklyn and Mm -hmm. now going to this very white um school (laughs) in massachusetts and we you know we ended up taking a lot of same classes together and we were like oh um like one thing that's missing up here is like blackness (laughs) um and one Mm -hmm. thing that we also like took for granted while we were at home is you know it's interesting that we talked about funk and and Charlemagne, but we were missing radio. Oh like God. it would literally like you would turn on the radio and it would static. scramble. Like yeah. so, you mm. would get in and out, and the the popular station over there was ninety three point seven. So it was like the hot ninety seven of Connecticut, mm-hmm. Massachusetts area, and it was terrible. Mm-hmm. And so we were like, so how do we get on radio? And then we found out that there were black folks that was on the radio, but it was like a year or two before we got there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we we're like, so we about to make this. Lit. like we about to we about turn to it up we about to um make it alive and um so we started the takeover with Kristen and christine the radio show mm-hmm. ah yeah so it started out as actually a project um because we were living in the black culture house on campus shout outs to all the droobies we are a part of the charles drew memorial black culture house on campus mm-hmm. um charles drew was an alum of amherst um he went on to um harvard and he was one of the first people to like figure out blood, um, blood transfusion which mm-hmm. is so sad because when he actually he died in a like a tragic car accident and it, he was like denied blood blood and oh, to think about the, the idea irony. right um so we lived in that house and one of the requirements to live in the house is that you had to do this project so we decided to do our project together and the radio show was our project mm-hmm. so we were gonna live there for like two years but we ended up doing the radio show until we graduated like literally until the last moment um for the sure. school like gave us dumb money buku bucks buku like, money mm, shout but, out yeah yeah I, i've so they amherst college sits on like tons of money and they they give their students like us like thousands of dollars to we get to parties. go to all our parties for free right you go wow. to all your parties for free so we like so what we're gonna do is finesse take the out of the money and so we decided <laughs> to bring angela yee to the pioneer valley um she went to wesleyan so it was like a sister school mm-hmm. of ours oh, my cousin went there yeah cool. um so she went there and we Did were like she? okay we about to let them down <laughs> so we like we about to leverage that um she also attended poly prep which is the um high school that christine went to mm-hmm. um and then she was also a prep student so 
we try to like finesse that like oh my gosh you're like one of us and um we want you to come so she came and did a meet and greet um and what did she do yeah she did yeah, a meet and greet did. at the party um so she hosted the party did a meet and greet and then she also was on our radio show nice. um and then we went we took a break had a hiatus we, we went had to, to cuba. leave we left the country yeah we <laughs> went to cuba um for one semester it was insane because like around that time like right before we left we had this thing called amherst uprising so it was like a huge um radical movement basically on campus in response to the administration not really taking students seriously specifically mm-hmm. for um various things from race gender class sexual orientation identity is like across the board mm-hmm. we recognized where things. we were failing yes um and everybody was like so what are you going to do about it um sitting stage the whole sitting in the library everything christine mm-hmm. really um was the catalyst for that uh that uprising so we had to leave um mm. to take a break to I it mean, was at the right time we naturally we yeah we, we were ready to go to cuba anyway we had applied and everything mm-hmm. but it was the right time and while we were there, we were brainstorming what's next for the takeover. Mm-hmm. So we like, do we bring Remy Ma? Do we bring she just out of jail. a boogie? Do we bring he just got popping. like <laughs> um, Cardi? Like, what do we do? Mm-hmm. Um, so we got back and the school up the budget. Right. So we was like, oh, you got more, <laughs> more money. At that mind you, the radio the radio station had its own budget, but then the takeover, like our show, had, had its, its own, own budget, budget, which was Correct. bigger. Than the, the station's budget. 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 Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So look at you. Basically, <laughs> um, Christine really worked the magic to get them there because uh, um, to get Cardi B there, we got Cardi B nah. pre Bodak yeah. Yellow though. Yeah. Um, but still, still Buku Bucks. <laughs> yeah. It was like weeks before the Love and Hip Hop, the her second mm-hmm. season of Love and Hip Hop premiered. Right. Um, it went from like a random email that finally went through like KSR group when the people that used to manage her. Um, like they were getting flooded with emails, I'm supposing. And I don't know, between my email and our student affairs email, mm-hmm. like they Something actually responded yeah. to us because they realized that I guess we were sending multiple responses. So like we were actually serious. Mm-hmm. And she was actually at the time she was gaining so more shout momentum. out to she was gaining more momentum, but more specifically, like she knew for herself she wanted to touch she was basically doing a, her own college tour. So mm-hmm. she had been at like a couple of schools before she came to us. So, you know, texting with her management people, blah, blah, blah. We figured out what the pricing was going to be. And she came. So um, we did a and we did an interview with her. We did an intimate Q&A with like our loyal listeners over the past how many semesters that we were doing it because mm-hmm. it was now our senior year. And then she came and she... Um, performed she performed some of her songs from her mixtape ran down on the twice Mm -hmm. (laughs) um we swag surfed with her and we had dj relly rel who is a hot 97 hot 93.7 alum Mm -hmm. um he came on and he's kind of like our big brother now he came and he dj'd the part the after party he actually dj both um, he did angeli and and cardi Mm -hmm. but yeah so we had those two major things happening and then we were like okay so we need that that was like the grand finale because it happened our senior year right Mm -hmm. um and then we were allowed to like throw another party get a random dj for mad money whatever um but that was like our big grand finale and then we were brainstorming okay so are we gonna cut it off is it the end of the takeover radio show Mm -hmm. do we think about podcast format and when we came back we were like okay so it's it's a very saturated market there's a lot of people that are offering the same things like what we provided in the pioneer valley is what exists so much in new york and like Mm -hmm. what we brought from new york to the pioneer valley and so we're thinking about how do we tweak it a little bit so it's fresh it's new um and it's not necessarily the content that everyone um receives Mm -hmm. already so um so we keep some of the same stuff that we had music mm-hmm. media black girl magic that has always been like the mm-hmm. the constant thread throughout the show and then we added um a bunch of different segments um right now we have a bunch of new segments mm-hmm. on our show um so if you go to the first and second season you'll hear like the black girl lit and the lit is for literature and i um, love that. the takeover segment i um, got it from my mama which um, is like an ode to our mothers and those who have mothered us mm-hmm. mothered us in terms of what we've learned and unlearned from them right black women can and can't but we will um but we swapped a lot of those out like just yeah. trying the to gathering see fresh. We used to gather mm-hmm. people right <laughs> um it's sort of like a read but we try to get them together right you know? mm-hmm. um so now we're we're trying to um veer towards more um positivity um <laughs> more of like because right now it's like there's there's so much deficit in the world so it's thinking yes. about how do you can like 
fill the void. Like How do you fill the void? Yeah. Right. So Christine mentioned we have um take one pass it down, which is one of our um last segments where we um introduce things that people can do to live like better lives, you know? So whether it's the Instagram accounts that you should follow or the newsletters that you should have in your emails, mm. like or little the playlist that you should listen to. We right, are going right. to plug. Yeah. Beyond <laughs> Beyond <laughs> of the day. Oh my God. Yeah. So this it's like is little awesome. tidbits. Um, what else? What uh, um, um, we've done. Oh, we're, your real talk. Your real talk, which is like, so I was doing this thing randomly on my Instagram, on my personal Instagram, where I would be like, your real talk, and like asking like these provocative questions that like everybody's talking about, but nobody's actually like talking about them. If that makes sense. So like mm-hmm. things like, um, do you sacrifice between being corporate or creative? Do you is is college like actually a thing that everybody needs? Like and mm-hmm. like people would actually responding to me shout outs to instagram with the new questions feature Love um, it. people were actually answering and then what i would do is kind of like a dear abby type thing where i would like write back and people would like actually have conversation within conversation so we were like let's incorporate that into the takeover so that's another segment and we do that on our social media we're gonna put up a new one in a couple of days but like um yeah i think it's an amazing journey we've definitely grown like uh from our freshman days just like chilling and like going mm-hmm. to parties and people like naturally seeing that we were sort of like a duo um to like actually understanding what it means to be like friends black women in the struggle black women's trying black women trying to like gain some sort of footing in the media industry black women who come from a line of black women who have gone through struggles um black women who you know, are coming back home and trying to figure out their footing and trying mm-hmm. to understand themselves because we're not the same people that we were when exactly. we, before we left. And just black women who, like, want to just be, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that the podcast has allowed us to be right. and be with others. So, like, we've had some amazing guests. A series that we did was, like, a D9 series where mm-hmm. we t- brought people from the Divine Nine, one person to represent wow. each different fraternity and sorority to, like, That's very nice. basically, like... Like demystify it all Mm -hmm. um we've had like rappers we've had people who work in in media people we have we had an og who's like done the entrepreneur life yeah um we're about to have like upcoming people who are like also movers and shakers who are trying to like gain their footing too and Mm -hmm. basically asking the question how do you take over right so that that's been like the um so after d9 we're thinking about like how do we as it feels like we're transplants because like, we've been to, uh, in school for so long, been in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. So like, how do we come back and also like meet people? How do we mm-hmm. network? So it's been like a, a, one of the catalysts for us to just like actually meet people, meet people and and learn new things and also specifically learn about things that people have done without the, the use of college. Like mm-hmm. so people have done so much and are very accomplished within themselves without actually having to spend the money or probably, you know, regardless of whether they had the opportunity, but they've made the best of what they had. Mm-hmm. Um, or so, even if they went to college, like, they're doing the ap- uh, absolute opposite, opposite of right. what they did because they're doing what they love. You right. Know? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so Move and Shakers, Go-Getters, The Takers, you know, thinking about how these people have really made a mark um, in New York City and beyond mm-hmm. doing things that they love. Uh, the branding of your entire being, both of you. This is awesome. It's taken, and you know what's crazy? It's taken over. It's, it's <laughs> taken over, but it's also taken us, like, we graduated on May 21st of 2017 and it took us until august so 24th. you just graduated. yeah like last year oh my year. gosh so young and so like everybody says that so <laughs> no but honestly like so young and so like sure of like what you are doing and what you want like that's We're really awesome yeah. yeah you guys are like 22 23 yeah it took us between may and august of last year to like actually like figure out what the show would even feel like mm-hmm. you know? right it's in constant flux that's the, the it feels like a good and a bad thing at the mm-hmm. same time because they're like so what is us what is ours mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. so when when we started out we're like oh this is definitely us but then we're like you know what we're changing as well so we want to mm-hmm. evolve with our show mm-hmm. um so it has been you know constant change and right now we're focused on like you said the branding like thinking about mm-hmm. how we want um others to perceive us specifically on a visual um on a visual a- aspect first because that's usually how people catch on to you they mm-hmm. see you know the images on social media they see mm-hmm. um 
you know, your individual personal profile, mm -hmm. um, and then they hear your voice. Yes. So I'm um, trying to get all of that packaged correctly. And of course, trying to collect the coins. Yes, so, coins. Period. So we've collected, period. We've collected some pennies, you know, <laughs> shout out. You know, our school actually hired us back to do like this diversity and inclusion showcase. So we were the oh, host look at of that. that. And it was the first ever. So like we didn't even have a diversity and inclusion welcome showcase when mm -hmm. we were. And I could imagine like if we were sitting there watching ourselves, we would have been like, oh, those girls were I mad cool. Just like that. Alums, da, 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 da. And then at the end, like, we were like, oh, follow us on the takeover. And, like, the thing that almost made me cry on stage was, like, literally just How seeing, many like, people follow? After, I was like, oh my God, they're following us. Like, literally, like, because, like, you didn't, we didn't really know, like, how well we did. But, like, for you to then sit there for, like, an hour and a half, two hours and listening to us, like, talk about our lives, introduce the next act and like be real mm -hmm. about our experience and then see that like that gratification nearly like 200 people, people in the yeah. audience just was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna follow them, those mm -hmm. girls. And they're actually liking our content and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we're, we, we want to collect more coins. So anybody in New York city that wants some popping hosts and their names, you know, go together and it sounds all cute. <laughs> we are here. Shout outs to us. I um, was here. Contact us at thetakeovercc at gmail.com. Thank you. I'm about it. <laughs> so what did you guys realize that you were like a perfect match to work <sighs> together? Ew, ew, I business. think it was when other people told us. You know what? I, okay. I don't no, think no, no, we no. really believed in think, each other. I don't like no, that. No, that's a lie. <laughs> I personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we, I noticed similarities with us. Um, one because we were in a lot of classes together and we did not register together. We would never mm. like, like we I don't hate, sit with each other and right. like talk about class. I like, legitimately that's hate like following people's like patterns and it's just like are you in the same class? I used to hate that too in college. Yeah, I just like I don't want to hear about your grades. I don't want to hear about. I actually none of don't want to sit next to you in every class and I actually don't want to see right. you or hear you other right. than when we're at lunch. So <laughs> I don't even want to hear you at lunch. Right. So I don't want you in class. Especially <laughs> academics has always been a personal experience for me. But then Christine showed up in all my classes, so it's like we just naturally became friends mm -hmm. because we were beyond like lunch and activities. Mm -hmm. We were always in the same class, mm -hmm. like actually intellectually engaging with other people. And we was people. at the parties too, intellectually Now the parties that now, we were the, <laughs> we were like the dynamic duo. So <laughs> it was like, face down ass out. Yeah, every party. No, but we was literally having fun around the Five College Consortium. Um, so the Five College Consortium is like Smith College, Amher UMass Amherst, mm -hmm. um, Amherst College, Hampshire, um, Hampshire and, and Mount Holyoke. Mount Holyoke. Well, shout outs to the Mahos. Yeah, Mount um, is on. So on we, yeah, so it was like we was attended all the parties together. And then we started hosting our own parties for different orgs on campus mm -hmm. outside right. of the takeover. So like Kristen was on the African and Caribbean Students Union board. I was on BSU board. So like we were meeting people from not only the five colleges, but like the community colleges would always come to our parties because we had the funds to throw parties. Mm -hmm. So they would come to our stuff. So like we were just always together. I think when, I think, okay, so I knew we, we were we were really to be together when it didn't have anything to do with school, when it didn't have anything to do with like life on campus. Mm -hmm. And we was actually like delving into like, our real life shit because mm -hmm. we come from two very different family dynamics so like i'm an only child to a single mother my ex my immediate family i'm not close with them at all like mm -hmm. my mom's actual family like blood i'm not close with them at all and my extended family that's like my church family and like the people from my neighborhood that mm -hmm. my mom raised me around i'm more closer to them but they're older in age because my mom is older in life so it's mm -hmm. like that weird thing of like my mom was very sheltering to me. Like, I didn't really go over to kids' houses. I didn't really know the people in my my um, initial neighborhood where I grew up. I grew up by, like, this really bad high school where, like, police was outside every single day. Like, Christine was inside the house. Like, I wasn't mm -hmm. chilling on the street. Um, so my my childhood experience was, like, when you make your friends, you make your friends in school and you love them, you love them, you love them. But then mm -hmm. when I was in high school, I was bullied by girls that I went to high school with from my program and then I never I had this whole mistrust against other black women mm -hmm. going into college because I was like well, I'm not gonna bangs with none of y'all and I'm gonna judge everyone because I got judged mm -hmm. you know and so like my college going into you college I was like <laughs> yeah yeah when I was in like when I was in my first year I was just like I'm not banging with none of y'all I Kristen Kristen's okay so we're gonna be together mm -hmm. um Kristen comes from a very different background, so yeah, yeah. I I think that's a that's a difference. I think our personal lives, like the things that we did not get to choose, were very 
drastically different mm-hmm. versus the thing that we chose mm-hmm. like in college were very similar mm-hmm. so me um i actually have six siblings um they range from i believe two years old to 25 um wow. yeah the, my, my brother that i was telling you about that just told me my face was spotty <laughs> he's five years old um <laughs> um spotty as in i have acne like wow disrespectful it's not <laughs> even bad it was, like that's i was like dang like dang you made me self-conscious and it was it was so funny though because i'm like a kid only a kid will tell you your face is spotty that's like oh my god when i was a camp counselor Mm because my town is very white Mm -hmm. and you know kids just don't care and they're just they have no why is your skin dirty and i'm like no that's disrespectful and that sounds like you're gonna go sit and no that sounds like a harper i'm (laughs) telling i'm I'm telling your mother (laughs) yeah um so yeah like mad siblings very close to all of them um my parents are young in comparison to i guess like most parents they had me when they my mom was like 21 when she had me Mm. um my dad was like 23 i think um and i had like moved all up and down the east coast so my dad was in the military um and we settled in brooklyn at some point in time and my parents you know they separated whatever um so it's been like i don't know and then I, I mean, I grew up in, we grew up in similar neighborhoods. So it was mm-hmm. like, my mother was not allowing me to be outside on a regular basis unless she was there. She knew what was happening. Like to this day, like the only reason why I ever saw Eastern Parkway during Labor Day was because my dad's family lived very close to the parkway. So mm-hmm. everybody would be out there. Mm-hmm. But my mom was like, absolutely not. This is mm-hmm. not happening. Um, So she's very overprotective when it comes to that. And I think most of like thank god for school because that's like most of my exploration has happened through that but yeah very like i think we Mm -hmm. have very similar um experiences when it comes to like i said like the things that we've chosen and then academics and then very different when it comes to personal yeah and i think what we value in terms of like our values align Mm -hmm. so like why why go to college why go to amherst college Mm -hmm. like they had good coin so i'm going to go there (laughs) same um and then actually realizing like why college like for us, Amherst College worked because it was a small space that really let us feel like we were valued. Like, mm-hmm. because prior to that, like, at least I don't know for anyone else who's listening, but like New York City Public School is like, it is a crash course in understanding like that the world does not love you. And like, you can feel so smart in your classes and you can feel, but you may not feel validated all the time because uh, other kids around you are not being validated mm-hmm. because they're being left behind. And then to go to a school where like every single one of your professors want you to like genuinely succeed. Like they, they don't care. They actually, they care about the work. Yes. They want their work on time. Mm -hmm. Um, but they actually care more about you. And I think because we valued that space so much and what we learned from these literal sages, like vessels of like, these people are so smart. Um, and then having them tell you, Oh, you're smart too. Mm -hmm. Like definitely, added to the experience college was so much fun and then we care about our coin like we was finessing the school out of coin mm-hmm. everywhere we could like and you we, did a good job of it clearly yeah Gosh, like that's money. when i even if i could calculate how much money amherst college has gave provided me, me literally gave me outside of my tuition academics and social life <laughs> what i was paid my account was looking really nice when i was in college i'm broke now so <laughs> yes So you both are obviously very open with your personal lives. Have there ever been any topics on the show that you've discussed that were a little bit more difficult to talk about? Uh, I think we talked about domestic Mm -hmm. violence once. Oh, we did. We had to like... um, It was like in a response to like a a close friend of mine who like had gone through something. Right. Um, So trying to be as respectful knowing that that friend could possibly be listening. Mm -hmm. Um and friends of the friends were could possibly be listening and having known people who have gone through things you know yeah that's that's how exactly how i felt i feel like it's a disclosure thing because that experience is very personal but at the same time you want it to publicize like that it's important to communicate with people that is important for people not to put their hands on you and all of the stuff that goes around it um but having had experiences like with people in my life that have gone through it. I didn't, I, I didn't want to like expose them, you know, mm-hmm. in a way. So, um, it's like you want to drive a point home, but you can't use names mm-hmm. or details. Mm-hmm. And so that's hard to, I feel like as a listener, I always like to hear examples. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm big on storytelling. I want to hear, 
I feel like more than you telling me mm-hmm. this is the what you learned from it, I, mm-hmm. I kind of need to see. I need to visualize what mm-hmm. what that what that um, learning curve was like for mm-hmm. you. So I felt like, oh, I don't know if our listeners are going to actually like, uh, like get it. it. How do you resonate when it's only like a, when you're speaking yeah. so vaguely? Yeah. So we ended up doing it as like a, in the context of Fabulous and Emily. Mm-hmm. And then like me trying to, as best as I could, like describe the incident that my friend had recently gone through that she was retelling to me and telling me like, oh, she was happy that I wasn't there because if I was there, I probably would have gotten into an altercation with the person who was trying to get into an altercation for mm-hmm. her because Christine it was fight men it was i do and it was it's something that i need to figure out for myself actually um but like why do i do it mm-hmm. you know as opposed to like why do i just you know not why am i a direct person as opposed to a delegator mm-hmm. or um but i feel like no i think i'm sure as okay so because i'm good. actually one of we the, here about i'm actually one of the f- nicest people right like yeah. i think that i could be a really nice person like i'm very generous i'm very giving but like I turn up on guys specifically. Like I go hard on guys. I think th- okay. To I want to like, turn this into hands. like a therapeutic <laughs> uh, like, therapy. You know, like I do. I've been there when yeah. I've seen her like escalate on several times men. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like men. I think it's a response to like what men have done. Like men usually feel um, some type of entitled. yeah yes, entitlement yes. to women and their opinion, women's their opinions bodies. and women's bodies. And Christine is like I'm not completely that. against it. It's like. So do you want to fight? <laughs> yeah, so it's like, like <laughs> since as you're not listening to me, since as you're not listening to my friend, since you're not listening to this girl that I just met on the street, so let's, so you're not, let's, so let's throw the hands. Like, it's really simple because then if I know that you're going to throw hands with me, then I know that you don't... Respect you don't women even, and you don't have... But you also don't respect yourself. And I want mm-hmm. you to see that, you know? Mm-hmm. And if it takes, like... And I'm not saying, oh, it has to take from my black eye for this guy to realize something about himself, but I also want it to be, like, understanding that, like... W- we're equals. No one has hit her though. No one has. She squared up to a lot of niggas, but none of them has hit her. <laughs> no, so. no one has hit me. Good. And yeah. And now that I'm back in New York, like I'm very mindful of like that because I think it's a whole different thing. Yeah, I don't think, oh, yeah. I was beating my chest because I was in Western Massachusetts where nobody's going to get crunk with me because there was dudes no, that I was yeah, like in people, my face. The mm. people, yeah, the they from New York. Yeah, though. yeah. <laughs> Most of them. But of I them. think, I think in New York, maybe it's also just because I'm not out od like this place is very expensive new york city is very mm. expensive my coin don't move stretch far um mm. i don't think i put myself in those i'm not in those places as often as when i was up there so i think that's one thing that we've talked about that's been very i think another thing that we've done is our last episode of season two we talked about like our leveling up and like our like growth growth and like i think that was at least for me it felt like a little bit weird because i'm like how can i talk about my good my bad and my ugly to mm-hmm. myself and be able to share that with my listeners because i'm sure they see my flaws and they hear my flaws all the time but like me actually sitting down with my flaws mm-hmm. you know and verbalizing them and talking yeah and about, then like, hearing Kristen to talk about her flaws too mm-hmm. like being comfortable to do that you know what are some of your flaws Oh, now you want us to do that. I just told you that was uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> just never mind that. No, 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 we, no. Yeah, I think. What, 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 I don't even remember what I said specifically, but I can tell you one of my flaws now. It was like I, I'm not. Um, you want to do all the things you were saying. You want to do all the things, but you don't. You you don't always give yourself a deadline, and then you end up overworking. Yourself. Oh, that yeah, it was literally like a, a assessment. Oh, wow, actually, I think that I it was. I was gonna give you some iteration mm-hmm. of that for today, but um, so. I, maybe I still need to work on myself, but <laughs> um, um, is that I, I feel like I'm not that 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 okay. I used Beyonce and said I was here, and I feel like a lot of that is I feel I feel like a lot of work has been put into like getting there, whatever there looks like. Mm-hmm. And since I'm not there yet, and I know I'm not there yet because I don't know what success. I know I, I've been successful, but I know that it's not the end of my success. You're not, mm-hmm. you're not at your pinnacle. or peak. I'm not at my pinnacle. And so I feel like I have so far to go that every single opportunity that presents itself in front of me, I take have it. To do. And, and I can, I can turn a, like a challenge, every single challenge into an opportunity. And mm-hmm. that's not always a good thing because I think burnout is a very like mm-hmm. real thing. And I think I need to adjust myself. Like think about how I can like, set the deadline, set expectations from the door and then be like, okay, this is what I will do and this is what I cannot do. Not that mm-hmm. I won't do it, 
because there'll probably be another time where it will come, but I cannot do it. So I think I need to learn how to like not spread myself too, too thin, thin. Um, just because I'm trying to like cease all the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For like, me, mm-hmm. flaw. Um, I think I want to, I think it's similar to this, but it's like, I want to say all the things like I want to be able to like, and I think that somebody was telling me yesterday, she's like, oh, like I just, one of my coworkers actually awkward, like she caught me off guard. She's like, I think that you're like a hopeless romantic for everything. And I was like, for everything? Yeah. Mm. She was like, even for like your work, like you're a hopeless romantic. Like you just want everything to turn out right. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, she, she was like, she was like on your core, on your outside. Like I was like, girl, you are reading me and I don't like to be read. Mm-hmm. I like to read others. And she was reading my book to me. Like she was like, yeah, she was like, you know, your exterior is definitely hard because of course you're from New York. Like you're from Brooklyn. Like you, you, you have it in you, but like in your, in your inside, like you actually just really want everything to go I'm right like mush ball. but <laughs> in reality like i have to understand that everything cannot go right and mm-hmm. like that's okay so like um in that same perfectionist realm is like for for my students i want all of them to do well but then i'm learning like all my students are different that's why they go to different schools that's why they have different experiences they all come from different families when it comes to like even like relationships and friendships like every single one is different so i have to be able to approach each one mm-hmm. differently um with my family with my mother like approaching each person differently um and understanding that like it is i can be a hopeless romantic for everything but everything is going to be imperfect and that's fine Mm -hmm. so i think that that's my flaw like being able to conceptualize that but then also act on that like given that this is this way don't be mad when this person doesn't do things. Don't always try to throw the hands i think that is exactly my issue as well like i have it's a lot of a couple of things with that though because like i'm also really impatient so if things don't go right when they should be going mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i'm like when you what want is them going to when right. i want them to go right i'm like what is going on mm-hmm. but it is like like you said like um if someone doesn't do something the way i would like it done i'm like what is going on yeah yeah it's like impatience and then a little bit of a hot temper mm. <laughs> from you yeah you seem so nice it's like it's it's not even like i get like mad i get like i have like an attitude and then i just mm. like close off mm. and then i'm just like mm, side i'm just eye. gonna not speak to you guys side eye sorceress mm-hmm. that's my lovey sh- ajayi she's my also a, do you know lovey do you know about lovey i have interviewed lovey once oh, before because you got a oh. coins she was yes. really really cool yeah she's the official source side eye sorceress she's hysterical yes Last question. Yes. Where do you guys see yourself, um, yourselves um, for the show <laughs> and then individually in in the future? I like nah, that. I don't, the future. Nah, I like that. Because I, I the can't. The future's tomorrow? The, I'm crying. <laughs> the future but then you can determine whatever you want. As exactly. Want, as That's you, as you I like want it. it to be. All right. You want, I could go first. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tomorrow I see myself getting to my school on time. I see myself nice. get eating <laughs> some good food. Mm. Um, and I see myself making sure that there's some social media up for the takeover. At Praise least something, Jesus. Something, just yes. one, something. Um, okay, in, in reality, um, you know, you know, I think a lot of people have said like, oh, they see me doing like boss shit and like media mogul entertainment mogul like something within that realm and i'm like oh so then why would and i believe in god so i'm like so why is god still having me work at this education nonprofit this whole time like why am i what and i'm like this whole time and i'm like girl you in your second year i told you why you see how she just be sounding like she know. I told her why because think about it. If you have if you have to work with kids, right, mm-hmm. and you have to work with not only because kids don't just come with themselves; they come with packages. Kids mm-hmm. come with their parents. They come mm-hmm. with their schools. They come with the actual developmental challenges. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that you have to manage multiple children. Yes, yeah, I feel like them. that that is literally that's management. That is yeah. that's relationship building. That is like yeah. the crux of businesses. Is yeah. that you want to make sure that you. Um, and they're going to be the future consumers. Exactly. You want to know who... It, that's ex- Remember I told you that? I was mm-hmm. like, these yes, are the people you... Yes. They're the creators. You know, like the youth are the creatives of our generation. Like we always... We look to them. Mm-hmm. They are like the ones that do not care. Th- that's why my face was spotty to my brother because <laughs> I'm not... Because there's no filter there. And mm-hmm. I feel like when you when you get unfiltered people, when you get unfiltered 
problems, when you get unfiltered families, I think that teaches you a different level of mm-hmm. um like career readiness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like it's different. Like, cause mm-hmm. when you get into businesses and everybody wants to, like, if it's a huge business, there's like 17 different layers and mm-hmm. everyone wants to be cookie cutter, perfect images of whatever. Like, mm-hmm. no kids don't come with that. Mm-hmm. And I think that is like, it gives you a great experience to like mm-hmm. deal with those type of, um, scenarios, scenarios, especially as someone who can potentially manage multiple people. people. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I think my future consists of like, getting into the media space and like actually like working in it but obviously like because i i'm naturally drawn to children my mom is a teacher and like i've just always been a mentor like an active mentor Mm -hmm. like i fall into it everywhere i go like i'm always talking to a little kid or talking to somebody or wanting to help somebody um so definitely like media and then having an arm of it like enforce like some sort of like arts education or media Mm -hmm. education situation because i think that oftentimes, especially like in our communities, arts education and media education is the first thing pulled from funds Mm -hmm. and trying to understand that it's not secondary, but actually complementary and if not primary to the experience of our children. Um, So that's my future. And then uh, the podcast, like, I'm saying once again, if anybody would like to hire us, like host (laughs) things, like shows, like I could see us like, really having something where the takeover becomes like an LLC and like becomes like a hub of, Mm -hmm. you know, understanding the movers, the shakers, the go-getters, the takers and creating a space for, for them. Mm -hmm. And whatever, whether it be a physical space, whether it be like a digital space, a space that people constantly come to, you know, Mm -hmm. and have things like this occur. I like, um, yeah. So that'll be the takeover. And married and like four kids, maybe Four. four. Damn, y'all both said it like that. Like, if I could pop them out, then I'm going to pop them out. Like, that's what Cardi said. My dream is... But then I heard about the breaking of the vagina, and I'm like... You have to sew it back together, girl. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's three levels of tearing. You can tear right to the butthole. Yeah, bro. Um, I don't know if my mom experienced that. My mom birthed five kids. So I don't know about no vagina. Well, you need to ask her. I'm about to ask her. There's, like, levels of tearing. Vaginal tearing, tearing. yeah. But also, yeah, don't have have C-section. My mother did not have no C-section. My mother did (laughs) like (laughs) now Um, one of y'all motherfuckers tearing her vagina so we had i was a little 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 baby so i don't know my shit was i was big as fuck my mom's i came out nice and smooth easy like one two three we out i think uh, (laughs) i think my dad recently told me my mom was in labor with me for like three days yikes because i was just like she was a little lady and i'm very little but i assume like Having your first child is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's probably like, I it's can't do this. The first time this. your body don't know what the fuck is doing. Yeah, they're just like it's supposed to go <laughs> through there. <laughs> no, mm, but no. Yeah. My dream is. Well, a psychic once told me I was having twins. You went to a psychic? Oh my I'm god! Yes, that's three. what I want. Congratulations <laughs> for the future. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, I pray because if it, if it's like, oh, if it's a boy and a girl, one mm. one and done, two for the price of one. Husband getting snipped or whoever. <laughs> Like, that's just right. Take it out and then that's it. That's the dream. I'm here with you, girl. That's the Listen, dream. I take the three. I could probably take two. I think two. three is my maximum, but, but I'm really, I'm really just four like, is two like, is like. But what if I get two of them at the same time? Then I have to. If it's a boy and a girl, time. like that is it. I think the max would be three. Like if I have two girls, I'll try for a boy. If I have two boys, I'll try for a girl. I'm not trying. I would prefer twins? to not have daughters. I honestly don't want daughters. Why? It's mm, gonna be just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Interesting. And then little boys are so much more fun to like fool around. Like not in a lot, obviously, but like they're like you can joke around with little kids. Like when I was a camp counselor, I was a boy counselor for I think two years, mm-hmm. and they were so much more fun. And they like they solve their problems so much faster. Like when I had the girls, they're like. When they got into fights, they would be angry at each other for all days. week. Yeah. And it's like when the boys would get in a fight, they would push each other. I'm like, hey, stop. All right. Enough. Say you're sorry. And then they're like, okay, you want to play soccer? And that was it. And I I'm like, this is, is the is. best. I, I feel that like is. that's socialization. I, I feel like we socialize girls to be like, at what point, though? Because they're watching all this television that'd be like, oh, we're the mean girls. We're the cliques. Eh. Mm-hmm. And there were always cliques. Like in the boy group, they would all play together at one point. And even if the one kid didn't like the other kid and they were on the same field trip together, they were friends on that what trip. What age were, were you? That's socialization. Um, I finest. started uh, the girls, the first group of girls I had were in, I think, 
first and second grade, which I was like, see, that's so young that's five, to be six? doing that. Yeah, but clicks. But mm. the, think about it with the Barbies. Like my Barbies cuter than yours. Mm-hmm. No, my Barbies cuter mm. than yours. And then the boys like, that I had were the boys. They playing with cars. How can a car sticks. be cuter than another one? Like <laughs> my nigga, we we playing Hot Wheels or what? Like yeah, there was like third. <laughs> they were uh, fourth grade boys going to the fifth, and then there was the same group fifth going to sixth but that's when they got like that's when the boys oh, get tested oh cool and i'm like yeah. you're not <laughs> like, oh, yeah. All right. but then my last year i had i was not supposed to be a camp counselor that year i was trying to get an internship and it didn't happen so i had like no choice but to go back to the camp <laughs> and these girls were 11 12 and 13 oh no i wanted I, to I, I, kill myself those are my children right now and Woo! yikes they were vicious they were vicious to me yeah. they were vicious to each they other have no cool oh my one of them called me a bitch because yeah. i told her to put her cell phone away <laughs> they're yeah, seniors in high school I'm now trying. and i'm like mm. <laughs> that don't get no better <laughs> god bless <laughs> them terrible children um, yeah. but yeah how do you think you're, well, how um, you hope your life Wow, goes. there's like, <laughs> what's your tomorrow like, looking like? I feel like? like we got a whole like landscape going. Okay, so tomorrow um, I have a presentation for work. So we got to get that together. Um, Good luck. I, I, pr- I pray that all goes well. Um, and for the takeover, um, well, takeover stuff, well, like near future is getting all of the social media stuff taken care of because, mm-hmm. um, again, overwhelming, exhausting week and it's only what, Tuesday? So yeah, she thought yesterday was Tuesday. I was like, no sis. Yeah. It's been long. It's been long, y'all. Um, and then for the takeover, I see takeover enterprises. I see, um, like Christine said, the movers and the shakers, the young people that are willing to like do good things. I mm-hmm. want them to be under our tutelage. I want to advocate on their behalf. Um, I feel like we, um, as as speakers, we're there, you know. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like we have a um, a good hand in like the organizational type of pruning. Um, for me, if we talk about kids, I want a max of. <laughs> Two? She want a max of zero. I want a max. That's of, her real max. Two is a two is a max. If I <laughs> if I like everything has to be right. So I don't I don't see that's that's the problem because everything is usually not right. But I want mm-hmm. everything to be right. Like my kids can't come into this world when like they're at least they're. I'm they're not home. having no kids in the Trump era. That's a fact. Absolutely. Well, I mean, not. we don't know what comes Let's, after the Trump era too. That's another thing. It could be Ivanka Trump. Right. Yes. So yeah, I'm as long as everything at home is Gucci, then we can have kids. But I'm thinking like two, <laughs> um, three max. Max, 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 max. Like accident max. One of my friends was like, "I want four kids," but then she's like, "I'm gonna get a surrogate." I'm like, "You got surrogate Your money? Surrogate is smart. It is, but it's like, I don't know, maybe." Let's see what it's like to just like see what that ha- like see how that feels, and then if I don't like it, then I'll go. <laughs> It's like nine Sorry. months of being like, eh, yeah, I'm not doing this again. Mm. Not next time. Terrible. Yikes. But what about personal um, career oh, personal endeavors? Career. Um, I'm, <laughs> Where you see yourself? You know, it's, it's very complicated for me. Um, I, I really, I really am invested in philanthropy. She's I gonna think. write a book. <laughs> Did you start this book yet? Um, um, she likes I've to been write. told. I've been told that I'm gonna write a book. So she likes yeah. to write. Um, we'll see how that works out in the future. Um, I do like to write and I love to read. Um, but yeah, I'm invested. I'm really invested in philanthropy. I think there's a lot of things going awry in our communities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there hasn't been a specific like direct investment in our communities that has been, um, lucrative and extremely transformative. And I feel like there is a way to make that happen. I think that with as many business owners, specifically black business owners, entrepreneurs, um, creatives, people at high levels, I feel like there's a way to tap into philanthropy, um, specifically through entertainment. And I feel like Mm -hmm. that might be the avenue I want to wriggle my way in. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to mix my key interests. Combine the interests. Yeah. When you figure it out, though, I feel like it's going to be really Corporate cool. social responsibility. Mm. But that's, but yeah. That's, yeah, but like through your own ways. But right. like, I feel like yeah. that's a way to okay. learn it. Yeah. Yeah. I like talking to you guys. You're cool, too. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you can talk whenever you want. Yeah, we're going we to have a conversation after this conversation. I'm <laughs> down with it. Because so, I'm trying to understand <laughs> where I, how I could. How you could fit in. I'm trying to fit in with where... Where you at? Okay. Well, the third segment. <laughs> sexman. Wow. Segment. <laughs> I almost said section and segment, so it was sexman. That's sexman. cute. Mm-hmm. Segment of the show is called Unpopular Opinions. So you give a hot take 
basically, and uh-huh. then uh, that's the discussion. We okay. just talk about it. You guys have any hot takes? Unpopular opinions? Unpopular opinions. I need a topic. What, what, what it could be we... about anything, anything in the world. Mm-hmm. Yo, so I, I'm reading this book. And it's called Killing the Black Body. And no, it's <laughs> not, not another book about, you know, the criminal justice system or police brutality, but it is adjacent to it. Mm-hmm. It's basically talking about the black woman's body and basically how all, like, the reproductive justice. And, you know, we was here talking earlier about, before we started recording, mm-hmm. about, like, you know, how everybody want to just have control over the black woman's body and these birth controls and, you know, sterilizations and stuff like that. And I just feel like it's annoying and it's really sad and it's just like i guess my unpopular my unpopular opinion is like let's just stop like i don't like it's it's hard because like i don't i don't necessarily understand like i'm not a doctor i'm not in medicine but between medicine pharmaceuticals and then this capitalist this like system that we live in i'm just like so does anyone care about my body and how it works Mm -hmm. and how it functions you know yeah that's how i'm feeling today bodies so bodies. what is the the one thing in that book so far mm-hmm. that you're like well this is what i just can't i can't do it the dark side of birth control given the fact that i'm someone who uses it and i'm just like what do yeah, i do with this what information do I do with that? or even like the idea of like this myth thing like they have this whole thing about the myths and like the welfare debate and the welfare queens mm-hmm. and thinking about like oh, marriage can end children's poverty. Like, that was a myth that people thought that, like, oh, I oh that well, marriage will, marriage will solve the problem. Like, and people really thought that, like, oh, all these black women are not getting married and that's why their kids is poor. Like, mm. no, my nigga. Um, is not that Moynihan? Moynihan, did, did, does she mention Moynihan report? I have, I have no idea. Okay, well, I'm let me know if yet, she does. But I will let you know. But even that stuff is, like, it really, like... I guess an unpopular opinion for me, I guess, in a general sense is like, so these books are being read in like colleges, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's interesting because the girl that was sitting next to me today that saw the book, she was mad rude on a train today because she tried to go for one seat and then she pushed me to push me over so that she could get a seat. And I looked at her and I was like, and she's a black girl too. So I looked at her and I was like, we're supposed to be in this together. (laughs) I was like, yeah, I'm about to sit down, but like, you could get the seat next to me. And then she realized like, that I was, like, I could talk up to her, like, because she saw me reading the book, so I guess she assumed that, like, she could just, like, talk down to me that I'm some, like, little prissy little girl. And then I'm sitting there to her, and, like, she's playing, like, some game on her phone, and then I'm reading this book, and I'm looking at her, I'm like, yo, I wonder, like, how much of this book could possibly be, like, well, how could I, like, impart some of this knowledge to her, Mm -hmm. you know? Or, like, even understanding, like, access and, like, how, I guess, like, I really feel like, college or like literacy in general like those type of things are honestly pulled from our people and then we don't we're 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 the living experience of this stuff and we don't even know what's going on Mm -hmm. and that stuff sucks i believe it and i agree and then like what's the access like what's the what's the or what's the common denominator like do you go to college and learn about this shit and then don't come back to your community and fix it like do the transformative shit or do you stay in your community and try to like work through it, but then you never get to a place where you can truly like help your community because it's, you're stuck oof, in your community, child, bitch. Mm. No, nah, no, that's me in academia because I feel like yeah. I went to a conference this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we were supposed to be giving hot takes on our popular opinions, but I went to a conference this weekend and um, it was like a whole bunch of black academics and I was just so proud and I was just so blown away by the level of intelligence. But I was also a bit upset about the they was removed the after, departure right? mm-hmm. from communities. Like you have to go back to do research. You have to go back to like work with the people that are your subjects, but they're just that. They're 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 your subjects, they're not your neighbors, you mm-hmm. know? Like they're your subjects, they're not your family. So it's it's really a weird thing for me. And I battle trust me, I have a lot of problems with corporate America. I have a lot of problems with work um, you know, working um for other people, not not for any like particular like reason on bar- on on behalf of my actual organization but just in general like the disconnect between these two communities like mm-hmm. communities of wealth and whiteness and communities of poverty and blackness not saying that poverty is always tied to blackness but those specific the those are the realms that I I jump between yeah. in my personal life 
Um, and just to see that, like, the the access to the knowledge is not there. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it literally is heartbreaking. So it, it, for me, it's like, how do you how do you be a bridge? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My popular opinion: Kevin Hart is not funny. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I agree. I agree as well. I okay, think so that, that's uh, not unpopular. <laughs> no, like I, a lot of people do think he's funny, and I think he fell off after the second stand-up that he did. That was uh, what was it? I'm grown little man. Is that the one we talked about? His kid being um with his slow dumb and, neck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ostrich. Yeah. Mm. I think that was his last funny. That's the last time he made me laugh. He has not mm. made me laugh. I think that he makes himself a mockery, and it really annoys me. I'm mm. glad someone else thinks that. It's like. Um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago in the office. I was talking about how Kevin Hart sold out, and they're like, "Did he sell out, or is he securing the bag?" And I'm like, "But always he's securing, securing the, the bag, bag is, but he's is, also sold right. out." Securing the bag, ha- they're not mutually requires, exclusive. Requ- I think it's like a step. It's like a natural step that you take, quote unquote, selling out because in order to, where's most of the money? Not with the black people. Yeah, he doesn't Although, have that like, show have that, the trillion, um, like, pow- like They have the buying power, power, but they the wealth is not there. Wealth mm-hmm. is not there. So, so Listen, we you, yeah. we spend our money, mm-hmm. but we and we do not invest it. We do not save mm-hmm. it. We do not do like mm-hmm. big yeah. things with it. Mm-hmm. Like when did I, when did I? I'm trying to think when he like sold out. Well, he has this. Oh, he is like he's like a host on some new game show or something mm-hmm. on CBS, mm-hmm. and I saw that, and I that's what prompted the response. I was like, Kevin Hart sold out, and they're like. No, he's securing the bag. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. he sold out. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him. Like, good for him getting that bag. money. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess. But, like. He also puts a lot of people on. I, that I can't, yeah. you know, I can't, but, like, disregard that. But. The way that he says things. Until you exact, pass me a bag. Exact same cadence mm-hmm. that he says it every single time. Yeah. So, first off. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got time. Sounds You're like not a little funny. kid. But I, why do people find him funny? I think it's his shortness and his voice. <laughs> He's short uh, that, that and caricature squ- of his squeaky. Soul. Yeah, that's that. Okay, mine. Um, Fendi, you have another one. Yeah, Fendi is ugly. Like this Fendi whole the, this like, whole craze of like is, it, is that the F's. one with the bucket hats? Like they have ugly bucket hats with F's on them. Yeah, they it's got like F's. it's like the yeah. F upside, upside down. down. It's and like the, the F, F up right side up and the F and upside got, down. Okay. Yeah. I think that this whole craze on Fendi, like everybody's been wearing it, like it's not cute. Like it's like Gucci have, back in the day when like Gucci, because Gucci had that same, dis, like it was a G all over. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel bad about. I feel like Gucci is appealing. Like I don't even like the Gucci G's. I like the red and the green. I think that that's yes. dope. That's different. Those yeah. are colors. I like that. But the G's used to be popping back yeah. in the day, all over the back. I like Burberry. Somebody told me. Somebody wait, said wait, Burberry, wait, wait. To, and I heard it. It's not Burberry. It's Burberry. Burberry. That is oh. I've been saying it wrong my mm-hmm. entire life. Um, I like Burberry. Um, and you know, I hate Coach. Coach is disgusting. Mm-hmm. But going back to Fendi, all these people wearing Fendi. Oh, Fendi this, Fendi that, and now Fendi had a Fendi just did a collab with Fila. So you know how everybody's mm-hmm. bringing back the Fila. That's what it is. So there's so a funny. Fendi guys, Fila get, collab now. People used to pick on me and like elementary school about your for Fila's, wearing right? Fila your Fila's and trash. Champion. And now everybody's wearing it. Look at that. And Champion is now dumb expensive when Champion used exactly. to be twenty dollars. I used to yo used to get, get them out of Walmart, bro. Now they selling them in Urban Outfitters for like eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. I saw a crop top. Fila shirt for forty dollars, yeah. and I'm like, dub that. Remember when I wore Fila and everyone picked on me? Dub I that. do. So I think that Fendi is disgusting. Like I feel like certain people have put together nice Fendi outfits. Like I recently saw Karen Civil in one. I was like, this is decent. <laughs> but like when I saw Nikki wearing it, I was like, ugh. <laughs> Cardi wore some. I was like, ugh. I was like, none of these it's people designer. is designer. That's really it's why dis- it's name. It's, it's designer it and it's mm-hmm. disgusting. And like, yeah. And it's sad because I like a bag. Mm. And I, I like a bag, like this type of bag, mm-hmm. like a bag to put my stuff in. I also like a bag, like I like Birkin and like mm-hmm. Coint. Um, but I don't like to spend my coin on ugly shit. And I think that Fenty, Fen- Fendi, is Fendi ugly. is ugly. Fenty is Fenty lit. is le- like, oh, I just bought the gloss bomb. I, I had to buy it. I'm like, why don't I have yeah. this yet? So but, I'm like, let me just yeah. purchase that. Another unpopular opinion, really quickly. Cool. <laughs> um, Fenty Beauty is all right. I don't think it's that amazing. It's not revolutionary. I think it's just the name attached to it. And I think now Do it's think actually slowing shades, down though? because there's, I think the shades are bomb, but I feel like now she's just putting out so much stuff and it's, it's so becoming overwhelming to me. 
Black Why did we need a silver gloss bomb? Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so I'm about to put on my CSR hat. That was specifically for the Diamond Ball and the Clara Lionel Foundation, okay. which was in support of, you know, um, disaster relief and education abroad. So, you know, trying to educate our little okay. girls. I so she back. need that. But the rest of it... Are like, you talking about the diamond gloss bomb? Like the diamond, like it's like the silver, white pearl yeah. lipstick? Like that's silvery. not for the Clara Lionel. Oh, the, that wasn't. This, this, okay. this that was the, the highlighter. Thing. Yeah, okay. the oh. highlighter. Well, that's too much still too, though. But, <laughs> so, that and I think... I love like, you, Riri, though. I love you. If you want to send me some Fenty product, I will try it out on the takeover right. show. Once again, the takeover cc at gmail.com. <laughs> you can send it. The PR I kit. I think my, sec- my <laughs> second unpopular opinion like ever here was like that... Um, what was it? Kilowatt? The oh, that was trash. Gold highlighter. I'm like, that is far too much. Like, yeah, it is just I agree. so unappealing. I thought it was like for the people that go up for makeup. I, I personally, I don't wear makeup on a regular basis. I have to hire people to do my face. But I think, I think you can do Fenty the, though. I feel like that's for you could do Fenty. That's for niggas that just be like flossing, like the real artist oh. with that. You get the glow like, and it's just like gold yeah. and yes. I want to see YouTube tutorials. I want to see runways. I want to see all of that with it's fancy just, highlights. I don't want to see yeah. people on the street with it though. Yeah. Like you just walk around with gold on your face. Yeah, it's too much. It's, it's, it's not. Much. It's, it's not a rose gold where like it could blend in with your hue of your skin. Mm-hmm. It's a bad it's bitch. Yellow gold. gold. Yeah. Bright. It's gold. a bad bitch gold. Like yeah. a gold it's with a like a gold. It's walking trophy. Gold. It's a Barbados gold. It's that gold. Okay, so my unpopular opinion, I feel like I'm oversaturated with Cardi B to the point where she's like on my nerves completely. We were just talking about this in a group chat. I know, I know. She's just oversaturated. Like I need a break from her and you cannot take a break from someone who's never gone and she needs to be Crying. gone. But that's the new artist of today. That's and none crazy, of these niggas right? are ever gone. Because Un- unless your name pregnant, is Beyonce, you're not gone. Even when she was pregnant. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The only time she should have possibly been gone was when she was pregnant. And then even th- that's and when even I muted then. her when when she was pregnant because like, every clip, well, hey guys, you know it's me, I'm pregnant, but listen, to, I'm like, what? Did, we don't need to know you're pregnant in every single the video. Album, the album came out while she was pregnant. You know oh. what it is? No, yeah. And, oh. and her social media engagement drives money because we is. have to remember like that's how that's what she she's, started she yeah. really got her kicks. she's not she's not i mean people listen to her music obviously but like her first check was probably an instagram it's check. the it's after to, the stripper check to think about mm-hmm. how your social media directly moves oh into God. like sales nah she's not taking a break and i don't think most people will and i think that they think if she slows down the money will slow down mm-hmm. oh for sure and i think she's fearful of that too mm-hmm. because she's a hustler by design like yeah, by, by design, design. Yep. like yep. She's never not hustled. She had to get it in Sue's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lord only knows. <laughs> what happened in Sue's, you know? Mm-hmm. How, how she used to get down in Sue's. Um, <laughs> which apparently, I just listened to some, apparently that woman was lying, but apparently the girl that put her on at Sue's, like did this whole interview, it's, you can find it on oh YouTube, Lord, I... about how Cardi was trash and how Cardi was like actually like grime and disgusting mm-hmm. and like yeah, basically her, how she put her on. Yeah, like it's sad. Like... But you know what? You know what it is? Because... I guess I'm because she already had the moment where like every magazine first picked her up and like told that story of the mm-hmm. the rags to riches mm-hmm. like she she can she can no longer drive on that because we already know that mm-hmm. now you're Amer- you're America's sweetheart already we that's done so now you need something new she had her baby you still haven't shown us shown you shown us the baby once you show us show us the baby. That's going to be another Cardi B. Now you're going to be taking pictures with the baby. And then, mm-hmm. you know, she's not going to stop because yeah, it's not I just gonna. need a break. Like I follow her on everything and I muted I her don't. on everything. I don't. I unfollowed like, I, her. I, I only follow her via the takeover CC account. Like it's exhausting. It's really, really tiring. <laughs> it's exhausting. Like I was talking uh, the other day. Uh, I was with my mom's friend and they were talking we were talking about how like cardi b is just like too much and my sister's like i think it's just because like i don't i don't use like social media like that i don't follow celebrities i'm not tired of her i'm like yeah but like she is actually is everywhere so it's hard to like miss her mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you follow, I don't know if you follow like blogs and stuff, but Shade Room, they post her. Like a lot of, bo- you don't have to follow her to know to what know her what's moves going are. on. Yeah. Sis is number <sighs> one on the Billboard, ain't she? Every Maroon yeah, Cloud right. Or Still with that trash song, crying. <gasps> song I was- need a girl like you. Like you. This one is terrible. Yeah, yeah. That song is. Terrible. But you know what? But you know why it's number one? Because guess what? Cardi. Maroon Five is 
but also Maroon Five is white. Oh, them Cardi B is for the, the hood. Yeah, so, so put you them bring together. All the buying power. You got together. all the buying power so together. Bad. That's oh my why. god. Because like Maroon Five's first album, like was I love excellent them. songs about Jane. So everything I after that them. has just been garbage to oh, me. Dang. I'm just like, why are you not? Girls like you, like, go back. When did Songs About Jane come out? Like, 2007? Probably. Mm. Imagine that Maroon 5, like, looking back and being like, they're going to put later. out a song like that. <laughs> like, like that's that. how, really? But that's how they get on the charts. They, like, put Cardi on it. So Cardi is, co- yeah, so Cardi's trash. on the charts. Everybody's for a check. That yeah. song is garbage. Like, I, no shade. Like, I do like Cardi B. I just need a break. Her new song that leaked today was cute. Yeah. I do like it, yeah, but it, it is, is the good. same flow that she always does. Da 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 da. Yeah, da, it's on, da, it's on da, that part. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that part da. is in there. She does it all the time. Yeah. I'm like, da, da, all right, girl. Y'all better get at partisan. Listen, party party is writing for Cardi, so so y'all better get at partisan or whatever his real name is. Fontaine. Fontaine. There we go. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because, like, his song, her part is better than his. It is. It's very sad. That's a smart move, though. Mm-hmm. Party and Cardi. Because he wrote both of them. He wrote, so he wrote, who all, gives he wrote the whole thing. thing. Who so. says it? And because <laughs> people know Cardi more, I want to hear her ver- verse. First, yeah. And so, more money for us. Yeah. But yeah, that's how I feel about Cardi B. I just just need a little bit of a break. Yeah, somebody, I mean, somebody said the same thing as you that we were talking to. He was like, yeah, you know, like, I, it, it's kind of sad. It's kind of saddening because we know that she's not writing it. And, like, that's part of, like, for singers, like, it's okay if you have songwriters because your it's more about your, your, voice. your talent mm-hmm. is your voice, like, your tone. Your vocals. Mm-hmm. The vocals, how you portray it, like, whereas for rappers, rappers it's, it's, the it's, pen the, and, it's the pen. Mm-hmm. It's also the delivery. Which I think she yeah. had a hard time with in the beginning. And anyway. she's and gotten a lot better. She, she's gotten a lot better. But now it's the same delivery yeah. every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's literally riding off of the personality. He's like, but I still know every song though. Mm-hmm. Facts. <laughs> and you know, like, no disrespect to her. She, Everyone has intelligence in their own way. But some of those words, I know Cardi did not, obviously not write because I know those words are not in her vocabulary. Damn. Yo, you know who said that? Kid Fury. <laughs> You Kid Fury said that. These are he was like, you think she sit there with the Webster dictionary? She did, well, she doesn't write it, but I, I don't think so. Some of these words. No, but I'm saying like after the fact, like you think she be sitting there with Webster dictionary? Like, mm-hmm. let me see what I just said. No, Dead. I think she understands the words, just that she wouldn't use them. She wouldn't Context use clues. them. It's like it's like life. reading books versus speaking, like speaking how you write, for example. Facts. Like, and so, even some of the puns, I'm like. You know he didn't come up with that. Damn. She said something about like she put cheese on her eggs. I think the puns are weak. That one's hilarious though. I put cheese on my, like I need cheese for my eggs. Like she's talking about like I need money for culture because culture is her egg in the new song. That's cute. <laughs> no. She said you didn't take so, it. No, that my, didn't hit. My favorite. Uh. No, I, I think I bought this up a couple episodes ago. But my favorite, like Cardi Bar, I, for like a week, I was like, wow, that's like really, really inventive. It was um, these hoes ain't what they say they are, but they pussy stink. They catfish and I'm like, that is genius. Yo, that's that like a sounds- wrap around mm-hmm. line. They say they are. Mm-hmm. They it's catfish. It's, it's a good. It's a good yeah, that, that line is, is genius. I feel like okay. <laughs> Huh, this is very terrible comparison right now, but I feel like that's such a Nicki Minaj like it is. Line. Yikes! Now don't, that, no, don't let them find this soundbite because nah, then they that, will come for that you. That don't sound like a Nicki soundbite though. I don't know. That sound like a, Nicki always talking about somebody's her vagina and who which I'm y'all is I'm not, not gonna, on her I'm level. I'm not gonna say anything on no soundbite, but I'm gonna just go like this. But here's the you one thing. You shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> like at least Nicki writes her songs, and you know that she does. <sighs> You know that she does. Oh, that? But on that note, we'll <laughs> we'll end it. Follow here. us, y'all. We, so, we love sitting on the couch. It was fun. That's all for and friends with Jana Jefferson. Follow the show on Instagram at and friends podcast, and then follow me on my new handle that I just changed. Okay, okay. It's at the notorious JNA on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes, the podcast app, and Google Play, where you can stay up to date on new episodes when they become available. And if you'd like to be a guest host on the show, hit me up at andfriendsguest at gmail.com and we'll keep in touch. Extreme thanks to my guest hosts for today, The Takeover with Kristen and Christine. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all the things at The Takeover CC. The Takeover CC. 
Awesome. What about your personal handles? You don't want to share them? Sure. Oh. <laughs> Christine.ayana, C H R I S T I N E dot A Y A N N A. Kristen dot Alexis, C H R I S T I N dot A L E X I S. I feel like I need to put my middle name in things, but I feel like I haven't used it ever. So I'm like, mm, let's just keep it to myself. Aww. Yeah, I, don't, I have something like that. But two two people, two special people call me Alexis. So it's, mm-hmm. it, and then I had like, oh, should I do it? But and I also feel like my, my first name's so different that it's like, mm, there's no need to like put a middle name because mm. it's like everyone knows. Not to be like that person, but like everyone knows I'm Jada Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your name has a ring to it too, so. Right. Jada. Oh my gosh, do you, if you get married, do you think you'd ever take your husband's name? She said name? no. I don't think I would either. I want him to take mine. Ooh. Smash the patriarchy. <laughs> I don't think I would take my husband's last name because mine just has a good ring to it. And I it don't depends on what his is. Right now, I'm already kind of, you know, my. My my name is my dad's name, and I knew my dad for only three years out of my life, so I already feel the type of way about mm-hmm. having his name. But my name has a ring to it, so it's kind of like a slap. My mom did it as like a slap in his face, like, haha, you're not going to get no coins from this girl being so mm-hmm. prosperous, but I'm going to let her keep your name for right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I may just change it just to be like, haha, F this nigga. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I like. Because I'm now <laughs> effing this nigga. <laughs> But I'm not a rapper, though. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.